everybody, I'm Tom Basso, and welcome to Week in Review, a weekly video series on the Dice Tower where we go back and take a look at all the reviews and videos we did over the past week, and then we tell you what we really think of them, or a short description of what we think of them. If you want to see what we really think of them, or the whole thing, the links are in the description below. Let's get started. Hey, hey, everybody, Z Garcia here. So last week, I reviewed three things. I reviewed Kare Kare, which is a tile laying game, which I rated a three out of ten. I thought it was not good. It is uh, very abstracted. It also is swinging on top of that. It did not have anything compelling in it. Felt uh, not right. Uh, and it was too short with two players. It's like, it just, it, it doesn't, it's not great. Kare uh, Kare, three. I reviewed 100 Tori. Uh, this I give a 6 out of 10 to. It's very pretty. I had some issues with the graphical design. However, I thought it could have been a little more user friendly. And I also found it to be uh, kind of samey along the way. Anything you do just about gives you 2 3 points. And so I find it less than engaging when you are spending more time just finding, visually finding a place where you can play and make sense versus thinking about what you should do. And weighing strategic options. That that didn't seem to be a priority you know, in, in my plays of it anyway. And then I reviewed Animal Kingdoms, which I rate a 7 out of 10. And this is a uh, family-style card game in which you are playing cards to different locations, trying to control those locations. Very simple area majority game. Uh, nice look, straightforward. I think it's it could be the kind of game that you uh, play with a mixed age group, you know, family and maybe an, an, an older on, a grandfather, a, a younger kid. Everybody could play together and have a good time. It allows for chatting while you're playing. It, it was nice. Breezy, interesting, pretty good looking. Components could have been better, but overall a nice game. And that's it for me. I will see you on the next one. Okay, so for me, first of all, I took a look at House Flippers, which even though it's a game I really like, I don't know that I can necessarily recommend it too highly because I think I'm very much in minority. A speed, cube spending, card flipping, card spending, uh, I'm sorry, uh, timer flipping game. Very fun, very one night though, and I think most people would not enjoy that much. What the heck is the name of a card game in which you uh, play... Cards simultaneous to everyone else. Play the highest or lowest cards. There's win or not win cards. It's nice. It works fine. But it's a single mechanism that I don't know that I could really recommend. Second chance. This is a flip and write game where you flip over cards and then draw those Tetris cubes into a grid. It's okay. There's just a gazillion of these roll and writes. And I don't know if this one is really standout-ish. Except that it's really simple. Ratville. You are a group of people hiding underground. Coming out to get food. Fight off monsters and collect resources to build cool weapons and some post-apocalyptic thing. But it's dice playing and card choosing for actions. Some really cool concepts there. Traintopia, a nice light style game. Uh, very introductory style. I think I could introduce people to the hobby with this one. Where you play these different uh, tiles out and build these little train routes to get points. But you draft the tiles and the things you place on them. Nice and fun. Speaking of nice and fun, Santa Monica fits that category too. Uh, a beautiful little game, drafting cards, building your own little pier in front of you, scoring points in a myriad different ways. Another solid game from AEG. And Sorcerer City, this is a big, grandiose game. I'm almost too big. Uh, a tile laying, speed tile laying, getting points in various ways, but you're putting out the tiles and building a city, five different rounds, fighting off monsters. It gives you a really satisfied feeling each round of the game and lets you basically buy more tiles at your city. A lot of fun. I also want to look at all the new Funko stuff. Uh, the two new mini expansions, which includes Kool-Aid Man, Jurassic Park, Golden Girls, exciting. And I took a look at the very first edition of Cosmic Encounter, the Eon version. that came out in 1977. So if you want to see uh, the differences between that and what we have now, I think that's kind of fascinating. We did a live crowd surfing. Rado and me recorded our top 10 most influential games from the past decade. Uh, now, of course, this is uh, was recorded live at Dice Tower West and is going to be certainly controversial. We definitely disagree with each other, but it was a lot of fun. I really like doing videos with Rado. And we did a, a, pay, a, a, a playthrough of Capes and Crusaders and a live board game breakfast and other stuff. So, live Q&A. You can check out all of that on the Dice Tower. And thanks for watching Week in Review. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. We'll see you next time.